One of the best things about the Canon EOS R in terms of video quality is the fact that they've included Canon C-Log in it. It's the first time that a photo slash hybrid camera has included C-Log from the start. Um, you can of course get an upgrade to the 5D Mark IV that includes C-Log and some of the later production runs of that camera actually include it again. But normally C-Log is reserved for the high-end cinema EOS line of cameras. That's the expensive cameras that Canon produce for shooting documentaries, movies, TV, that type of thing. So to get it in the ESR was actually a nice feature. Oi, oi my name's Chris, AKA Snackophagus, and uh, today I thought I'd go over Canon C-Log and how you can use that to produce more cinematic images with your Canon EOS R. If you don't know what C-Log is, it's basically a super flat picture profile that allows your camera to collect the most dynamic range when recording video. So in other words, you retain more detail in the highlights and the shadows when you're shooting in C-Log than you would normally shooting with one of the other picture profiles. That means that when you come to edit the footage on your computer, you can actually create a more cinematic image because you have more data to actually work with. When you view the footage back, it's actually gonna look really flat and ugly. It's gonna have no saturation, no contrast, hardly any colors in there. It's gonna look yucky, but that's actually the whole point of it. What it does is it captures the maximum amount of information it can in terms of dynamic range, and then it allows you, through the color grading process, to decide how you actually want the image to look like, what things you're willing to compromise on, what things you won't compromise on, rather than leaving all that up to the camera and the internal color science that Canon have put into there. So it gives you a bit more flexibility, gives you more creative options, and it lets you be in control of how you want that image to look, rather than leaving it up to the camera. So the first thing to remember when you're recording with C-Log is it's gonna take a lot more time in the post-production to actually color grade your image rather than just using one of the standard picture profiles. So if you want a fast workflow and you've got something you need to get out in a hurry, I wouldn't recommend using Canon C-Log. You're probably better sticking with one of the Canon picture profiles in there and uh, getting a fairly decent image straight out of the camera. Canon is known obviously for its color science, so it does have appealing colors straight from the camera. Also, C-Log isn't great in low light situations. Um, it tends to produce more noise than one of the other picture profiles, uh, but it's not too much of a problem not shooting in C-Log if you're in low light situations as there tends to be less dynamic range anyway in those scenes. So another thing to think about if you're shooting documentary, you're running and gunning, you're not entirely sure what the lighting situations are gonna be like. Uh, then you're probably best to stay away from C-Log and again, pick one of the other picture profiles. Right, so let's go over how you might set up C-Log on your camera and uh, how you can get those better cinematic images. So one of the first things you wanna do when shooting C-Log is you wanna make sure that you're shooting in one of the all I codecs. The all I codecs actually give you more information than the IPB codecs. Uh, so it's less compressed image. You're gonna get the maximum amount of data to work with. I can't really see why you would wanna compromise on this. You're gonna produce bigger file sizes, about three times bigger than normal, but you're gonna get the maximum amount of information. And if you're gonna be shooting in C-Log, you wanna get the best picture that you can possibly get. So I don't see why you wanna go for one of the compressed codecs. So make sure that you're in one of the all eyes. Then it's on to the C-Log settings themselves. Now there's three options in here. There's off, which is self-explanatory, no C-Log. Uh, then there's 10-bit and there's 8-bit. Now, if you're going to be shooting 10-bit, which is obviously the better quality of the two, then you're going to need an external recorder that's compatible, like an Atomos Ninja 5, and you're going to have to shoot in 4K. There's no other way around that. There's no other options in there. So 4K, external recorder, 10-bit. 10-bit's fantastic, giving you the most colors, best image quality possible out of the camera. It's going to look beautiful, great for editing, great for color grading, but it is bigger and you do need that extra equipment to be able to deal with it, which is a bit of a shame. It would have been nice if it could have done it internally. Lots of cameras at the moment can do internal 10-bit. Bit of a shame Canon didn't include that, but they did include 8-bit. So not quite as good as 10-bit, but you can still get a nice picture out of it and it allows you to record to internal memory cards. The next option is the view assist. Now I've always got this turned on because it's pretty useful to be able to see what you're doing. So what happens is you record in C-Log it gives you this horrible, nasty, uh, flat profile, flat picture. Looks like mush, looks horrible. And it's actually really hard to see what you're doing when you're looking at it on the back of your camera or when you're looking through the EVF. So the view assist puts a LUT over the top, bringing the color space back to the Rec 709 color space. 
and it gives you a more contrasty, punchy image, which is a lot easier for you to be able to deal with. It lets you make decisions about how the picture is going to look, you know, frame things better. It's really pretty useful uh, and it doesn't get recorded. So you have to remember that you still, when you put it into the computer, you're still going to get that flat picture. Uh, so this is just an assist. It's just something for you to be able to look at and see and uh, use when you're framing up and uh, composing your image. The next thing on the list is color matrix. Now there's only two options in here. You've got the Canon EOS Cinema Original and you've got the Neutral. Now, if you've got a original Cinema EOS camera like the C300 or the C100, then they shoot in the Cinema EOS Original color matrix. So if you're gonna use your EOS R as a B camera to one of those cameras, you wanna cut between footage from the two cameras, then putting it into this color matrix, the original Cinema EOS original, that's gonna give you the best match between the two cameras. They're gonna look pretty similar and you're gonna get a nice consistency through your overall film. If you're not gonna do that, if you're not shooting with one of them, then you can go for the neutral one. That's the more modern of the two. People say that the color science is a little bit better, maybe a bit more Ari-like. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, it's a personal preference at this point. Both are pretty nice images, so it's up to you, but they've got the option in there that if you're gonna use an older cinema camera from Canon, then you can match the images up. And uh, the last one on the list there is characteristics. Now, this gives you a few options in there. You've got the sharpness, you've got your saturation, and you've got your hue. Uh, you can go in and change them. I leave them exactly as they are. Sharpness down at zero, saturation at zero, hue at zero. Uh, you can go negative with the hue and the saturation, but I leave them where they are, that's perfectly fine. And sharpness down at zero. I don't want the camera to sharpen. I want to be able to do the sharpening and post myself. You can make a better decision on what to be sharpened, how sharpened, and uh, yeah, so that's better doing it that way. So the last thing you want to do when shooting C-Log is you want to try and maintain an ISO of 400. That's the native ISO of the camera. That's where the camera produces the maximum amount of dynamic range. If you go higher than this, you're gonna to start to lose dynamic range, which is the opposite of what you wanna do with C-Log. You wanna maintain that dynamic range, and you're also gonna add noise into the image, as you would do normally when you increase your ISO. So try and stick around 400, 400 exactly if you can. That's gonna get you the best images, and that's gonna give your C-Log the maximum chance of creating the maximum amount of dynamic range. So pretty useful tip to remember. Stick an ND on the end of your lens, and you should be good to go, keeping it around 400. Right, that's the video. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Thumbs up if you did. Subscribe if you thought it was absolutely amazing and the best thing ever and you want to see more videos like this. If not, hard line, sorry, try my best. Um, yeah. See you around. Take care.